Tesla sets a new record and both of our contributors, Tom Malogny and Eli Burton, will be here to weigh in on this achievement, but does it really matter? Also, Tesla may finally be settled on its new location for the new factory. A big news for Tesla in Michigan, Battery Day is being moved again, and you'll never guess who may be designing the new Tesla model for the Chinese market in other Tesla news. Plus, an all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E will let you keep your hands off the wheel while driving. We now know what the Volkswagen ID4 will look like. Polestar 1 gets its surprising EPA rating, and a CEO of an automaker working on an electric semi-truck gets upset at a publication and goes off at them on Twitter threatening to sue. But here's the surprise. It's not Elon Musk. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here and you're interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, let's get back to the big news. And Tesla has become the very first manufacturer to achieve the 400 mile plus electric range for the Model S. Now, Elon Musk mentioned that this was already achieved a few months ago if it wasn't for the error that EPA made during the testing, but now it's official, it's 402 miles. Let's bring in Eli Burton of My Tesla Adventure and talk to him about this big milestone. All right, Eli, this is yet another update to the Model S and Model X range, but this time it's not just software. What did Tesla do to achieve uh, this particular uh, range milestone? So this is pretty interesting. So all cars made SX starting beginning of 2020 have a few things that they've changed to make them more efficient. Uh, one of them is they made the car lighter weight by changing some components in the battery pack and the battery cells using lighter materials. And they lightened the weight of the seats. And that's something you don't really think about that like to get more range out of an electric vehicle, you don't have to just increase the quality of the batteries or the motors, which they did also do. They also changed some parts having to do with like this like lubricating oil pump in the induction motors that they changed the style of the pump and save weight there as well. Now further, one of the places where they gained, they said about 2% of efficiency was the new aero wheels. Uh, this is something they brought down from the three and Y. Um, and all that's added to the final component, which is they added a hold stop for uh, regenerative braking, which basically means they're going to get a little bit more energy regen out of the regenerative braking feature. And that's the one change that was done via software and didn't involve any hardware components. All right. Now, uh, I remember that uh, Elon mentioned that um, they, they kind of accused of EPA uh, botching the previous uh, rating because they forgot to close the door, went to launch, you, you know, used up some uh, some energy and you know it is a little far-fetched but regardless of whether or not it's actually true do you think this is one of those times where you know you know Elon has to work with EPA Tesla has to work with EPA moving forward do you think this is one of those times where you know Elon could have just kept it you know just to a, a, a private conversations rather than just calling kind of calling him uh, calling them out publicly you know, it doesn't really seem far-fetched at all. In fact, the idea of accidentally leaving a door open or not all the way closed is a really easy human thing to do, especially when you consider for non-electric vehicles, that would have had no impact on the range. Only in electric vehicles are you gonna use range if the door's left open versus a gas car, it's gonna affect the 12 volt battery, not the gasoline in the tank. So I don't think it's far-fetched at all. Also, you have to look at the context about how it happened. Um, he was talking about how the range is actually longer than the EPA range. And when he was asked why that was, he basically explained that on the last test, our logs show that they left the door open and that compromised some of the range. If that wasn't true, then this new test that just confirmed that it's over 400 miles wouldn't have happened. Um, honestly, it, even the way it was said, it didn't seem like some broad sweeping ac uh, accusation or even suggesting they did it intentionally. It seemed like just saying, hey, here's what happened. So I don't really think it was a huge deal. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to affect his relationship with the agency. It wasn't a full-blown assault on them. And assuming it was factually accurate, which we have no reason to believe it wasn't, I don't think there was anything unfair done there. All right, that's fair enough. And uh, okay, so let's move on to something else that Elon mentioned. Um, I believe it was in a Q3 um, uh, conference call where he basically mentioned that, you know, Tesla's making the Model S and Model X almost like for sentimental value, I believe they, uh, they called it. However you know, uh, Model S still has the best zero to 60 
um, not just for the Tesla family, but pretty much for all, uh, I believe, production cars, but definitely for uh, electric production cars. Um, and now, once again, it's you know set another milestone, not just for Tesla, but for the entire industry. Do you think maybe it was a bit of a rush statement to dismiss the Model S as a flagship car? And do you believe that it still is? I remember hearing that live on the earnings call. And I am, my immediate reaction was that that comment was overstated. Uh, I think what he was trying to drive home and, 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 and went a little too far, I guess, in trying to make that point was that the Model S and X are gonna be insignificant to the future of Tesla's impact in, in accelerating the transition of sustainable energy and really insignificant in their sales. And if you look at 2019 alone, Tesla sold about 35,000 between Model S and X and they sold over 150,000 Model 3s. And as Model Y ramps out, Model S and X are gonna are gonna be responsible for a much even smaller and smaller percentage of their total sales. However, just as you highlighted, Alex, these cars are still valuable to the brand because even if they only make up one or 2% of their sales at some point in the near future, it is still the numbers and continues to hold them in the place of being in the lead of range, performance, and efficiency. So I think if for nothing else, it will have major symbolic value to the brand to show that they have got leadership in all of these key electric vehicle components. A quick reminder that Eli is the creator of the Adventures of Starman. You can pick up this and previous editions using the link in the description of this video. All right, let's move on to Tom Malogny, the Inside EVs contributor, and talk about, is this too much? Is 400 plus mile range too much even for today's consumer? All right, Tom, um, I know this is a big milestone, uh, but at the same time, is 400 miles too much? Is it something that most electric car owners will never need? Well, it's never too much, Alex. <laughs> But um, in reality, uh, it's really not necessary, in, in, in my opinion, at least. I mean, there might be some people that really need an extraordinarily long range, but for the vast majority of people, you know, the difference between a 300 mile range car and a 400 mile range car is something that they might realize once every two or three months when they go on a really long road trip. So. You know, I mean, kudos to Tesla. I think it's fantastic that they just keep improving their vehicles. I mean, you know, the weight reduction, the new Tempest wheels, the drive unit efficiency has been increased. You know, you know that's, what, that's what keeps them out front. They just keep making their cars better. And you know, t uh, Elon was not going to let somebody else come out with a car that had 400 miles of range before he did. And you know, at the end of the year, there's probably going to be another 400 mile range car out there. Okay, so you know, so is this more about the uh, you know Tesla being able to improve their cars, you know, every few months and sometimes every year or so in in, in some big ways, uh, or is it really achieving a certain number that people are com comfortable with? Do you think we need to get to 500 miles before people will feel comfortable? So we've, we've had some conversations about this in the past, and I, I have, you know, an opinion on this that maybe isn't shared by the majority. And I, I think that right now where we are with electric cars, I think the more range, the better. It makes people feel more comfortable because electric cars are still this new thing that a lot of people just aren't sure of yet. And, and hearing it has an incredibly long range will make people feel more comfortable with them. But what I think is going to happen in the industry over the next decade, as electrification becomes more prevalent and it, it's across the product lines on all the cars. I think we're gonna actually see the ranges start to reduce a little bit as infrastructure increases. Now, as if we had a robust public charging infrastructure of high-speed DC fast chargers, like what we have with gas stations now, if they were literally everywhere, we wouldn't need 300 or 400 mile range cars. That would just make the cars cost more and be less efficient because they're heavy with these giant batteries. I think once we have infrastructure everywhere and it's very easy to quickly recharge, it's a 10 or 15 minute stop to get another 100, 150 miles. I think we're gonna settle in it around, most electric cars are gonna have somewhere around a 200 mile range. Uh, I think you'll be able to buy a car with a bigger battery if you're the type of person that needs to drive very far, very often. But I think what we're gonna do is see the ranges increase, 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 then all of a sudden start to decrease as the infrastructure matures. 
Of course, the car that Tom was referring to was the Lucid Air that's going into production at the end of this year, and it should have over 400 miles of range as well. If you want to follow Tom, there is a link to his channel in the description of this video. Let's move on to many other stories, including many other Tesla stories. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the Tesla community's accessory store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. Another interesting story that came up this week uh, is the story that originated last year where Tesla said that they're going to come up with a model specifically for the Chinese market. Well, now there are reports that they're ready to move forward with it and you'll never guess who's going to be designing it. And it's going to be you. I'm talking to the Chinese audience on YouTube where YouTube is prohibited. But bottom line is, it's going to be a contest, it looks like. People will submit their designs and Tesla will pick, hopefully, the best one. I should probably know that this will be the second Tesla model that their head designer, Franz, will have nothing to do with. In other news, it looks like Tesla will be delaying the battery day once again and they will also delay their annual shareholder meeting because, I don't know if you remember, but we still have the virus going on and here in California we have some restrictions still and social distancing uh, looks like Elon wants to have this event which actually he says may be a combined event the shareholder meeting and the battery day it looks like he wants to have it here in Fremont California which is only a couple of hours away from me so we'll have to wait it will probably happen in August and I will keep you guys updated well, whenever that's going to happen, one thing that Elon did promise is that the Cybertruck is going to be there. Now, if you've never seen the Cybertruck in person, well, you are definitely in for a treat, especially if you are somewhere in Southern California, because the Cybertruck is on display at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles until June 27. Don't forget, you still have to buy a ticket, but it's there. You, can, you can't really touch it, but you can definitely take a selfie with it. So let me know. And if you do, send those pictures to me and I will be happy to post on my Instagram and other social media feeds. We will get back to some other exciting Tesla news later in this video. But now let's talk about the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E that's going in production later this year. They've announced that as part of their Copilot 360 package uh, that won't be available until Q3 next year. But nevertheless, as part of that package, you won't have to keep your hands on the wheel like you would with any Tesla model, something that uh, a lot of Tesla drivers, including some of the former Tesla drivers like myself, uh, not, very, not very happy about. So you won't have to do that with uh, the co-pilot on, on Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now, it will be limited to about 100,000 divided highway miles in North America. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have to pay any attention at all. You still do. It's just Ford will track your awareness in a different way. As you can see, there will be a driver-facing camera that will keep track of you, as demonstrated here by a guy who is um, obviously in need of a tan, but also is related to the Cybertruck, apparently. So once the system senses that you're not paying attention, it will uh, call your mom and get you grounded. No, I'm sure there will be some sort of a notification and some sort of a warning, but... I think this is a little bit more freeing, literally, uh, compared to what Tesla has to offer right now, where you have to keep your hands on the wheel. Let me know in the comment section which one you prefer yourself and why. Ford has also announced a deal with Electrify America, the fast charging network in the United States, that every Mustang Mach-E will come with 250 kilowatt hours of free charging. Now that's good for about three to five refills, depending on your usage. Though, let me remind you that companies like Byton has a deal for two years of unlimited charging where Porsche has a deal with Electrify America for three years of unlimited charging. So 250 kilowatt hours is you know better than nothing, but still a little disappointing. Ford has also announced on top of everything else that they will feature the industry's best intelligent range estimator, which will be contributed to by the crowdsourced data from other Mach-E vehicles, but also will be based on a lot of parameters, including maps and conditions and so forth. If you are an electric car owner, you probably know that most of the time the car will tell you have so many miles, but usually it's way less. So let's see if Ford can do better.
Volkswagen ID4 is coming to the United States at the end of this year and it looks like it's going to be a very decent electric car. Now it's going to have about 250 miles of EPA range. It will be priced at around $40,000 before the incentives and as you remember it was based on the concept called ID Cross. So it's finally coming here. I like the ID3 that's just going to be kept in Europe unfortunately, but now we know what the final product is actually going to look like and here it is it's actually leaked from some chinese sources so it's kind of hard to credit the original source but apparently volkswagen filed some paperwork and these pictures were there and so now they got leaked out and we know what uh, what it looks like and here it is let me know in the comment section what you guys think i think it looks great i think it looks like if a uh, byton m byte and the fair future ff91 had a baby and I'd like to adopt it. Lyft has announced that its entire fleet will be all electric by 2030. Now, this is great news. They said they will start with their own vehicles first, that are for rent, and then they will kind of propagate it through their entire fleet, including all the driver-owned vehicles. Now, as you remember, Lyft has launched the green mode in some markets, including Seattle, where you can request an electric car only if you prefer when you are ordering your lift this is a developing story this is an exciting story so i will definitely keep you updated only more reasons to subscribe to this channel polestar one the one that goes before the polestar two that everybody is excited about that's going to compete with the model three but before that polestar one is going on the market at the end of this year as you remember i reported on this about what about a year ago when i saw it in person at the monterey car week now, it's a beautiful car, it's going to be a plug-in hybrid, and it was supposed to have the longest electric car range of all plug-in hybrids on the market of 93 miles. Well, unfortunately, now that EPA finally rated this car, and it's only at 52 miles, still pretty good, you know, pretty much the same uh, that uh, my Volt that I have in my garage is, but, you know, it's, it's quite disappointing because it's almost half of what they've promised. Let me remind you that they're going to make about 1,500 of those over the next three years, and the price tag is going to be $155,000. Tesla is now for sale in Michigan. If you remember, Michigan is one of those states that just would not allow Tesla in there. I wonder what a reason they had, well, what three reasons they had, but nevertheless, uh, finally Tesla struck a deal with the state where they've kind of created the loophole for Tesla kind of imported in there through a different state, but still register in there, and the service centers are going to be working. It's not the ideal way of doing business, but nevertheless, Tesla is now for sale in Michigan. That's a big win. All right, so let's talk a little bit of some drama that's going on uh, in the world of electric semi-trucks that somehow does not involve Elon Musk. This time it involves Nikola's CEO, Trevor Milton. Now, as you know, there were some reports already very recently about their reversed merger, which made the company go IPO. Um, our contributor, Eli Burton, actually uh, created a video why there are a lot of concerns about it. As a result of that, Eli actually got blocked uh, by uh, Trevor Milton on Twitter. So there's a lot that's already been going on, but Here's another development that I really didn't see coming. So Bloomberg uh, has published the article by Edward Lidlow, one of their writers, who actually wrote about Nikola very recently a couple of times, but he accused Nikola of having their Nikola One semi-truck at the unveiling back in 2016, which kind of is already a little bit weird, that that truck was not really functioning when Trevor Milton said it was right off the stage because of this moment of the presentation. We will have a, a chain on the, on the seats to prevent people from coming in just for the safety. I don't want someone to end up doing something and driving this truck off the stage. So it's a little expensive, okay? You could probably buy a jet with what it costs to build this thing. So we're gonna to try to keep people from uh, driving off, but this thing fully functions and works, which is really incredible. So the article has accused Nikola of actually not having the appropriate parts and even uh, fuel cells in that truck. So essentially it wasn't really operational uh, as uh, Trevor actually suggested. Now I gotta tell you, I'm not really sure why it's really important. Uh, most of these cars that you see on stages when you see the unveilings and so forth, are not operational that's pretty normal 
I don't really know why Bloomberg thought that it would be a good idea to publish an article about something this insignificant that happened a few years ago. Probably the IPO had something to do with it. But in response to that, Trevor Milton went on this Twitter rant, uh, basically accusing Bloomberg and the writer of all, all kinds of stuff and uh, threatening to sue and on and on and on. Something that we kind of uh, are used to if, we, if you follow Elon Musk or Donald Trump on Twitter, but really something I don't really think is really that necessary. It, it's not something that really matters in this case. I'd say let's concentrate on creating a great uh, competitive all electric semi truck, all electric pickup truck, and then let the competition begin. But for now, all this drama, I don't think is very necessary. So let's move on. All right, let's get back to Tesla. And there are still a few stories to report on. And one of them is the fact that it looks like Austin will be the location for the next Tesla factory. Tesla just spent $5 million to acquire a piece of land where the future factory will probably be built. And they will start building in a second half of this year, which is in another month or so. Um, if you remember that first Model Y will be produced at that factory. But after that, the Cybertruck is going to be produced there moving forward. Tesla has managed to get into some hot waters this week as well when Elon Musk announced that Juneteenth would be a day when Tesla will allow some of their employees who want to take this day off as an unpaid PTO that they could. However, this message has arrived to some of those employees who have already showed up for their shift. All right, so this is one of those things that you can't just be late on, Elon, like a launch of a new model. This is something that matters to people, especially during these times. I hope they can rectify the situation next year. On a positive note, it looks like Panasonic and Tesla has renewed their friendship for another three years. They had a rough relationship in the last few years as Panasonic continued to lose money at the Nevada factory. And that's what this deal is for as far as the Buffalo, New York location is concerned. Panasonic is out of there. But here, here, this really does matter. And this is great news because this relationship is really the cornerstone of the production of all electric cars for Tesla. So three more years. A quick reminder that uh, this is my full time job making these videos for you guys and also that I uh, like to eat. So if you would like to support me, uh, go to patreon.com slash E for electric and become a part of my Patreon community. I put that link in the description of this video. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.